we went to back of Caesar, and uh, Fraser's uh, we usually don't talk much about Caesar, so uh, you might see some pictures, but the Insta stories and everything you saw, they were all made up. The real thing was actually a lot more. So, uh, but we don't talk too much. What happens to Caesar stays in Caesar. That's always the rule, so it's always fun. Now today we have uh, two speakers. Uh, yes. And we start off with Rasmus, who doesn't know Rasmus did yet. He was one of the top festers. Uh, he actually was the first selling 2,300 units this first summer. And now he has been top experience dealer for two years in a row. So definitely top person here. Uh, best day, 205 units. So again, if you think of Caesar, 1,200 units, he can do 200 in a day. Best week, 555. So for him, Caesar is in two weeks. Uh, Caesar three times, success coin, fake day. If you don't know what fake day is yet, then you sell 100 units a day, twice in the summer, and you get a free food, which is always valued, right? So Rasmus has gotten three times free food. So I want to win award twice, uh, top team 2019, and also top rookie OL. So we have awards for OLs, and uh, the first time OL, it was the Best in all Europe. Uh, we're the best, right? Number one? Yeah. That's always a proud moment. So, love soccer, tra traveling, uh, movies, playing guitar, all those cool things. And uh, the summer before, Southwestern lived and worked in Hawaii. So, he has been traveling a lot. And also, one thing that Rasmus always enjoys is definitely good bets. So, if you make a bet with him, he usually takes them. He likes, to, he likes that gamble. And, uh, you know, just Whoever wants to beat this summer, go make a bet. You, you can, uh, or you can lose or you can make 100 bucks or whatever you bet on. So he definitely always takes them, so always fun to hang out with him. So here's Rasmus. Hello. So how is everyone enjoying the Estonian uh, winter? <laughs> Right? A lot of uh, cold and uh, dirt. I'm going to speak a little bit uh, today about uh, uh, something that maybe you can uh, change next year so you don't have to be here like the whole winter. It's uh, Sizzler. Who know, who's heard about Sizzler? Okay, good. All the managers have done a good job. Sizzler uh, uh, happens every January or at the start of February. And uh, the best uh, salespeople from the company uh, win the trip. And uh, let's speak a little bit about uh, what happened there. Um, well, before, um, <laughs> like imagine, like next year, and uh, it's January. You're through your first summer, and then um, everyone is going to Sizzler, and you don't want to be that guy. You know, you can't really get tanned like that. You can try, but you know, it's Estonian sun, right? So you don't get ten, and then you take up out your phone, and then you look on Instagram, and you see like you know pictures from Caesar and palm trees, and you know beautiful people. So you really want to win the sister trip. <coughs> yeah, so that's uh, <coughs> that's uh, the E1 or from Estonia. That's how many people were on sister uh, this year. Uh, a little bit. Remi I'm missing from there, so there are more people. Uh, and um, okay. So what happened in Sister? Uh, I had a little bit of the trouble making the you know presentation. Uh, there will be a bad time remembering like what happened. <laughs> Luckily, I had some people that you know send me some pictures, so you know I had a refresh had had a refreshing memory. Uh, let's start with uh, the hotel. Who likes you know luxurious hotels, five star hotels? Who's been in one? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this year we had uh, managers. Do you agree? It was the best hotel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Five stars. If you look at like the prices, I, I got curious like after after sister like how much is it? And then the cheapest uh, room that I could find was three hundred uh, euros per night. So you know, pretty good deal. Not, we don't have to pay anything. Uh, Ronald, Ronald pays. <laughs> and uh, that's one picture. Uh, it was the Rixos Hotel. 
pretty nice. Uh, during the daytime, a lot of stuff to do. It, uh, we're in Egypt, so you know, weather is good. I, I don't think I saw like a single cloud. Like every morning, well not morning, but afternoon when I woke up. <laughs> I looked in the sky and it was just like blue and then sun shining. Uh, and then, you know, there's uh, some stuff that you can do in, uh, in the daytime. You can, you know, have fun in the pool, you know, play some games, swim, drink. Uh, you can uh, go uh, diving, which is pretty cool. Who's been diving before? Yeah, I hadn't before, Southwestern. So last, last uh, sister was uh, my first time. You don't even have to have like the license or you know the <coughs> whatever. Uh, you can do like a trial run, and then you can see like all the corals and everything. Because uh, we have like this boat trip, which is pretty cool. Um, I guess we rent out like three yachts, and then uh, we go like one day to the Red Sea, and then you know we party there and swim and uh, jump in the ocean. Not the ocean, but Red Sea. <laughs> Uh, you can go uh, drive some ATVs, you know, in the desert. You can see some camels. We even saw some dead camels in the in the road. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. <laughs> and then uh, you can even drive like uh, drive like a camel, and you know, drink some tea and shisha. Um, yeah, that's us in the desert. Um, even better, it's you know, when it's with you know good people. We had like a private tour, so we could drive as fast as we can. It was pretty crazy. And you know, if you're tired of you know drinking and partying, then uh, you can you know be cultural. You can go see some sites. That's uh, one mosque. We didn't see a lot more. <laughs> and then um, you know, why why is sister good? You know, <laughs> because of the people. <laughs> uh, you can you can see some. Pretty cool people there. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, guys as well. <laughs> yeah, if if you don't get uh, fit for Sizzler, you know, we have a day for that. You know, that's fitness day. <laughs> yeah, and then you know everyone meets. You know, if you if you can't wait until the you know evening to party, there's even like beach parties. You can you know phone parties. It's pretty cool. And then you know comes evening. Uh, I couldn't put like uh, you know every any picture here, so you know these are the uh, moderate ones. Uh, but be careful when you're you know partying in uh, Egypt, because you know you can see some pretty interesting people there. You want to be you know make your health insurance and everything before anything can happen. We have like uh, cool dress codes. That's uh, Tripolotsky night, so Russian night. A lot of semkas and vodka and stuff. Uh, then uh, that's like expressive night, so you, know, you can wear expressive clothes. One cool thing about uh, like Southwestern is that we have like theme parties. So you know, every evening in Caesar, uh, there's like a theme. Who has been to a theme party before? Yeah. Who has been to a theme party where most of the people are just wearing like regular clothes? <laughs> yeah. Like first Caesar, I thought that that ah, dress goes. Nobody's gonna you know. <laughs> Nobody's gonna you know, put on clothes. Stupid. And then I was the stupid one. <laughs> but I found some clothes. I went to the bazaar and then bought some, you know, Adidas. <laughs> yeah, so uh, in uh, Sizzler, every evening is like a theme party and people actually dress up. Uh, yeah, so that's the gangster evening, gangster party, Gucci. Um, <laughs> Let's skip that one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, and then uh, one night uh, we have like date night and uh, well, it's date night and single night. So if you're in a relationship, you can go have like a wonderful date, or if you're single, you can go crazy and uh, you know play some party games and you know meet some new people. And then, if you're like really lucky, maybe you meet like a really cool person. <laughs> and then, you know, that doesn't stay in Sizzler. Sometimes. <laughs> and then you're, you know, preparing for this Sizzler and, you know, waiting for date night, but, you know, you start drinking like too early. 
and then this happens. <laughs> Still no date night. <laughs> but it's okay, you know, because you know, you still find cool people. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, meet new people. Uh, that's the superhero night, so you can dress up like as your favorite superhero. I'm going to speak a little bit uh, about how to win it as well. Who knows uh, how many units do you have to sell as a first year? 1,200. Yeah, 1,200. 1,200. Is that a lot or, you know, medium or it's pretty low? I think it's pretty like low. I don't think it's really hard. I mean, if you sell, if you do your work, if you do like what you're taught by your manager, you know, in the meetings, it's pretty easy. Because, you know, it's 1,200 units. If you break that down, it's only 100 units every week. Only 100 every week. And how you get like uh, 100 units every week? You get like six clients. Or you get like two clients that buy the whole package every week. You know, if you see 300 people, you know, chances are they're gonna buy. So, you know, just do the job, do, do what you're taught, and then everything works out. So, you know, Sizzler is like average one, one customer a day. Um, and um, I was talking about like, is it high goal or, you know, medium? I think it's pretty low. You know, don't have your high goal as Sizzler or you know, your main goal, only goal, you know, to sell Sizzler. Because you know, if you set it as your main goal, you're not gonna sell it probably. Because you know, if you aim high, you're gonna you know, fall, fall a little bit lower than your actual goal. So have high standards, have high goals, and uh, you know, be top first there. A um, couple of things, couple of tips, probably heard them before as well. Like, you know, have good schedule. <laughs> schedule and attitude. <laughs> so what is schedule? Let's speak again. So schedule, you know, is doing the thing you know you have to do, you know, even without, when any, anybody, even when your manager is not looking at you. So, you know, eating properly, sleeping, you know, going to sleep, waking up at the right time, reading, morning, evening. Um, and you know the most important things you know hours the more hours you put in the more you know the more you you know grow the more you see people the more you sell and then demos you know do a lot of demos uh, and then um, you know guess that's like the you know average you know 12, 12 plus hours everyone does that 30 plus demos but you know have higher goals you know 35 demos set uh, like um, controllable goals you have like a unit goal but you know set it as you know i'm never gonna do under 31 demos unless i have like five or ten customers that day so be hard working one thing as well you can be like on schedule but if you're you know walking like this to the next house you know that's not really being on schedule so move fast between the houses and you know be focused you know, focus is i think like the most important thing you know be in the moment and you know, you only have like the three months. And you know, if you do well, you can do anything like the rest nine months of the year. Because you know, you have money. And uh, always do one more. I have like a story as well. Like most of my, uh, my like most memorable uh, clients or customers were like after 9 p.m. Because you know, when I feel like I want to go home, I say like, you know, one more, just one more, you know, push. And then I even had like two families or two mom and dad, like two separate ones, a single mom, single dad, who didn't even let me open like the book. I, I knocked on like after 9 p.m. and they said, come in. And then uh, they didn't even let me like do the presentation. They said, stop the presentation and gave me, my, gave me the credit card mm -hmm. and just bought like $1,300 worth of books. And you know that happens when you know you work hard. If you don't give your best, you know those things don't really happen. Why did they do that? I asked him like after the sale as well. Dude, you didn't even look at the book. Why did you buy it? And then he said that you know education is so important. And you know if if her if his daughter gets a good grade, then you know it gets good good scholarships and you know good university. So it was a no-brainer. 
and uh, good attitude. You know, even if you have, you know, this car, <laughs> if it breaks down again and again, you know, fix it up, go to work. And uh, uh, for me, like first summer, um, I think why I, I guess I didn't hit my goal, so it's okay. Uh, why I was a top first year, I think for me was because of my problem solving, like attitude. Because every week you can ask like my manager Sander as well. Every week I had like problems, but I didn't go to him. Like on Sundays I was telling like what happened. Like I broke my iPad, my car broke down, uh, sunscreen went, you know, crazy in my bag. Uh, whatever, you know. But you know, I was like, you know, awesome problems. I'm gonna solve it, and then boom, it's gonna be a great day. And usually when I had like problems, like my car broke down in the morning, it turned out to be, you know, a hundred unit day, like my first summer. I think I had like five days when I had like a lot of problems in the morning, but uh, I still hit like, you know, I got a pretty good day, three or four clients. Uh, winning attitude as well. And that's the one thing that I was saying, that, you know, have high standards, you know, aim high and, you know, you have to work for it as well. Uh, with winning attitudes, I think when you're you know, in the summer with the org, uh, I think it, for me it's like the competitiveness as well. You know, first summer ev every week uh, you get like these wristbands, who does like most uh, calls, most demos, most sit downs, and every <coughs> week like for the whole summer, 12 weeks, I had the uh, demos, uh, the wristband, and when I saw like in the daily <coughs> recognition, you know the top uh, demos like uh, every day. I saw like one of my work mates, like, you know, they did 35 or 40. I was like, shit, I need to work. And then, you know, that pushed me. I think that's, you know, one part of like winning attitudes, you know, working working harder than, you know, I think. And uh, what, you know, keeps up attitude, how to, you know, deal with problems. A lot of self-talk. Self I didn't get it first, first month of, you know, first summer, but you know, once, you know, it's pretty important. When it clicked for me, you know, everything got like better. But you know, just keep, you know, talking. You don't have to be this, you know, big American smile, happy-go-lucky guy or girl, but you know, just, you know, speaking to yourself, speaking what's around, and you know, not letting like the negative thoughts come into your head. And um, I think I was wondering, like after first summer, how to train, like my attitude. And I was thinking about, I couldn't figure out how, and then I did like PC with my DSL, and then she said that uh, if you do things that are out of your comfort zone, then that uh, trains your attitude. So in before the summer, how to train your attitude, how to you know be ready for the summer, just do things that make you un feel uncomfortable. For example, for me, it's winter swimming, running, uh, reading. I don't really like those things. But I do them, and you know that uh, gives me discipline. And you know, when I'm freezing, you know, in the cold water, you know, trying to get out, then you know I'm trying to keep like good attitude. And you know, mental toughness as well. I think that's one of the most important things: be like mentally tough. Uh, that those two like go together. If you do like things out of your comfort zone, you develop your you know mental toughness muscle. And then what you can do now, you can train your attitude. What else, what else can you do before the summer to get ready? First years. Technical training. What? Technical training. Technical training, Same. what else? Schedule. Schedule, have good schedule. Have good, you know, grades, good schedule, wake up, right time. <coughs> yeah, do self-talk. A lot of things you can do. Uh, the more proactive you are, chances are the better summer you're gonna have. If you are not proactive, you're just, you know, gliding by, not really doing, just doing, you know, the basics, you know, summer is gonna be like average, probably. But if you do more, you push yourself harder, you know, you get ready for the summer, you're gonna push yourself more in the summer as well. Um, but before the summer, get your mindset right. And uh, I'm talking about, you know, don't just go into the summer like, yeah, it's gonna be like fun and you know, probably gonna you know, sell, sell the most, but you know, actually have the mindset to be the best, never wanna be like average, 
be like number one top first year um, and that requires like a lot of work there's no talent here it's only like work technical like it was mentioned uh, learn your sales talk in the spring we're gonna have the cycles so do a lot of cycles um, but do quality cycles so you know the different situations if you do like 60 cycles, which are basically every, every cycle is the same, it's pretty much pointless in my opinion. And on the other hand, if you do like 30 cycles and you have like a cycle sheet, and you have like different situations, you're more ready for the summer. <coughs> know the products, go to the office, look at the products, write, uh, write it out, like what you like there. And uh, again, do some out of comfort zone activities um, and work on your what ifs. What, uh, what uh, with your manager, like what could happen in the summer, how to deal with it, how to solve the problems, and be teachable. And uh, we have this saying in uh, Southwestern as well, a couple of years ago, um, this uh, really smart guy, Andre, <laughs> he, uh, he was, you know, one Easter evening, was thinking, you know, or on boat trip, he was thinking like, why is it so good? I don't know, but then it hit him. It's because of the people. So why is sister good? Because of the people. Yes. So the more, the more people that you know in this room that win sister, the more awesome it's gonna be, right? Think if every single person here in this room is in sister like next year, wouldn't it be awesome? Ronald would have to look for like two hotels. <laughs> yeah. So 20, 20, 21 sister. Be there. Don't be in Estonia. It's for. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, see, you learned some, and you only saw one good picture, but there's more. There's always more. <laughs> so um, now let's move on to get more professional. In that sense, that uh, the part today is called getting professional. For being professional in the southwest business, and uh, we have one of our legends, uh, Mighty Spio. You see what uh, what Rasmus did, and he had the top pressure and all those awards. So, and only three summers. So now let's put it on eleven years, and uh, you you do four times more everything. So uh, Mighty is a TSL of the Invincibles Group, and uh, lifetime total units of fifty-four thousand units. So that's in a, I would say, there is over like 150,000 people that have sold books, and that's in a top uh, 30, 40, well, <laughs> 40 maybe. <laughs> so it is that definitely in the top all time producers. And growth seven times, top experience dealer three times, uh, I mean, no, top experience every summer, and but three times uh, explosion trip, uh, and then. Best day, 417 units, and best week, 1,535 units. You see the units get bigger, so if you want to learn some units, go and ask a few questions from this guy. Best summer, 9,600 units, and uh, he's also a platinum, double, a double platinum winner, which means that he has won both in recruiting, so building great teams, and also in sales. Uh, we have if you sell over 30,000 units, you win that. If you have personal team over 30 people, you win this. So I uh, love working with people and help them grow. That's the main mission why he's here. And he's married to book girl Maret, and they have little, two little boys at home. Uh, Maret is also a great investor. So there was a startup investor list, and he's one of the top investors in Estonia, like in startup companies. So after you've been selling for a few summers, and you learn good sales and uh, uh, team building skills and you want to found your own startup, then you know, like money puts hundreds of thousands in those companies. So you can also go and ask for some money. All right, here's money. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, more welcome. If you want to burn some money, you can give some money because you know, uh, startups, they all go up, but things that goes up, what do you do? Sometimes they come down as well, <laughs> but uh, hopefully they stay up. Southwestern only goes up, 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 up. Uh, but uh, today, uh, do you want I start with some interesting story from my first summer or the best customer story? Interesting. 
<laughs> Interesting story from my first summer. Okay, gotcha. Um, I have many stories actually, uh, but um, I start with uh, one. Uh, how many of you have uh, bought a car in USA? Was it your first car? Mm -hmm. Same for me. Uh, it was year 2009, and then I was uh, bicycling around. It was pretty fun. It was pretty hot, and I thought, "What? Okay, I need a car." I met some uh, Colombian guy. Uh, <laughs> Colombian guy. They're really nice guys, um, and uh, and he had an uh, old uh, Kia Rio uh, in the house, um, and it was pretty sexy. It was red. It was a uh, black color. Uh, with black uh, black windows, it was it had a sport uh, muffler uh, and uh, pretty nice uh, and uh, 1.4 engine or 1.6 engine or something like that. Very economical. Uh, um, I was working in Florida. Florida is uh, south part of the USA. Usually pretty hot there. Um, car didn't have AC. I don't know. No worries. The windows are always can get them down. But you know, Florida, it's uh, raining. <laughs> windows up and then you're in the car, it's almost like sauna and you're driving around and uh, but that wasn't the bad part uh, or interesting part. Um, um, I didn't have money uh, but uh, I knew that I have uh, money in my Estonian account. Uh, 2009 I made a transfer uh, from my Estonian account to this Colombian guy uh, to his account in the USA. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how they came up this idea, but uh, uh, but uh, he wanted money. And the uh, interesting thing, uh, the reason why he sold car because he he wanted to go to uh, back to Colombia because he didn't have a green card or anything. Uh, and uh, and okay, I, I got the car. Uh, and they say the money comes. He gave me the car. He trusted me, and I registered on my name. And middle of the uh, first day, this um, you know, it was manual, the stick uh, came away. And I was like, holy moly, how I turned the gears. I put this uh, pencil in there and it started in pairs. And I didn't have time to go back and uh, ask what was wrong because I had to do my demos and get the customers and so on. The schedule, schedule is lifeline. And uh, a couple of days later, I, was, uh, I went by uh, this Colombian guy and he came to the door and his brother came to the door and said, well, oh, you know, this European guy is back. Uh, um, and then they invited me in and stuff, and then they asked, where's the keys? I gave the keys, and I said, well, there's some things wrong, can you fix it or help me? I said, you know, the money hasn't come to the, my account, I'm gonna take the car back. Um, I was okay, I made the transfer, it's, money is not anymore in my Estonian account, and we go to Colombia, car is gone, and <laughs> holy moly, what an experience, I learned life lessons in USA, and they gave me the old bike, and I got the old bike back. <laughs> Okay, back in uh, at the beginning, like, uh, let's make some money. I just lost 10,500 bucks for this car. Uh, uh, okay, I went uh, back next day and said, no money again, you don't get the car. I went back third day and said, no money again. I was like, okay, I'm going to work with the bike. I was working for a week uh, with the bike, and then um, uh, suddenly a brother called and said, you know, we have money now, come and get your car. <laughs> But you know, I, I still had didn't have this uh, manual seat, so I put it something there, and uh, and it lasted me first summer, middle of second summer, engine blown up, but um, at least it was great. Uh, this uh, great problem solving story at the beginning. So uh, let's get to the point. Uh, being professional, uh, this is my topic. Uh, uh, business running. Um, Getting fine cars uh, wasn't my uh, cup of tea. Uh, wasn't very professional in that field. Uh, but um, uh, let's go on. If you if you like to uh, want to learn and be paid like a professional, you need to act like a professional. Um, I think that's a main point that you can write down. Uh, I have one very good story as well. <laughs> do you wanna do? Do you want to share? Like, uh, it's another great story how professional I was um, uh, my first summer. My great uh, organization leader, Timo, Timo Les, uh, he was my roommate and he, uh, we didn't have a uh, place to live uh, in Florida and then he was looking, this is the richest neighborhood. You, you go there and you start knocking and asking if somebody has an extra room for rent out. So I was like, oh, moly, moly again, that's great. And I go out and let's do it. In the gated area, I sneak in with my bike and put it look. English wasn't uh, wasn't very English. It was kind of like Estonian English, something like that. People uh, pretty much didn't understand what I do and thought about um, and kind of like um, um, I don't know what they thought about. I thought about I'm positive and smiling. 
But uh, suddenly I didn't have umbrella and it started raining and I had this uh, pink color map and very nice white uh, white shirt and this uh, pink color map uh, started um, uh, getting red and then all my all my shirt was red and my shorts were red and uh, and I had just like a backpack and I was knocking on doors and asking like do you have a place to rent out that uh, um, I got rejected quite a bit uh, <laughs> I didn't get in because it didn't look nice probably it didn't act very nice uh, and uh, after like five six hours I got the first award of the summer uh, do you know what's the first award? Yeah, blue light award. Uh, that was pretty interesting. Uh, this American sheriff came there, and that's what I do. I said, like, I'm looking around. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and I gave him a passport and said, you know, dude, where do you live? I said, uh, uh, I'm looking like uh, I, I have a hotel or something like uh, a match. It's going to reach me up for Where's the match? I don't know. You know, he doesn't have a phone. <laughs> Very solid story, <laughs> but this uh, obvious to say, yeah, you know, just go out of this uh, gate there and uh, tell what uh, you have uh, problems this morning. So, okay, great. Um, okay, uh, second summer I was better. I didn't uh, like, I was acting more like a professional, but uh, that was my first beginning um, uh, in the USA. Uh, uh, pretty humble. Uh, so, uh, I talked about good uh, business management uh, today. A uh, couple of first things, uh, what you have to do to be professional is that manage your business. If you're a business owner uh, and you have great vision, you sell very good, but you don't know how to manage your business, what happens? Your, uh, your account is uh, zero in a, if you're lucky, but usually it's negative. Um, and, but the business management is important. Uh, books are equal money, that means that uh, push, uh, books cost, and if you ask money from the people, just keep the money and uh, and do accounting and look uh, some stuff over. We have really good systems for that. Uh, we use weekly report uh, and uh, ROS system where you uh, put in your customers and you track their bad payments, good payments, and you put every day statistics in what you do. Um, and your manager is going to teach about that. Uh, uh, it's not very sexy, but it's good. Uh, you can just uh, at the end of the summer analyze your statistics and see how good you're doing them. Second great thing is that uh, Gold Guard app. This is awesome stuff. This is so good. Uh, I use paper uh, map when I, I, I sold blog sense and lots of you as well. But last year we started Gold Guard app. This is kind of the thing uh, we always has been uh, uh, excited that. Uh, we should have like the first year who has a GoPro front of the uh, head and see what how he's approaching and running around. This is where kind of uh, you can track uh, where you work, what time you sit down, uh, is it a mom or dad or demonstration or something else, and you can see that uh, track where you go and you can uh, be way more effective. Uh, who who used that GoPro app last year? Was great was defective mm -hmm. and then second summer you can see uh, what you can improve uh, what, how many sit downs you did who you you sat down and, uh, and and how long was your sit downs and so on so starting 710 with the first store or 719 is that great working hard or hardly working working hard yeah that's how you make those bucks um, long hours. Uh, so, uh, second uh, thing, uh, uh, the uh, second app is uh, Sales Rabbit. Uh, great story, I think uh, two weeks ago, Jaak uh, shared when uh, Jaak Rosa, uh, a famous Estonian investor, uh, when he, he uh, when it was first day for him, he knocked on the same door three times, and then the grandma was like, What are you? Wait! Call the police! And, uh, how many of you happened at the same thing first summer? I had the same freaking thing, like because the houses are very similar, and you see this old grandma comes to the door again, and you're like, oh, uh, my name is my uh, 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 house number, and, uh, but this is the thing that helps you to be more effective. You just put the house down, and then you know how to move around, and uh, and uh, this is your turf, your area. Uh, use it. It's very effective uh, tool to manage your business better, more effective at the time. Great. Like it at best, yeah. 
Awesome. So be organized. Uh, be organized. Uh, this is important. That it means be in schedule. This is the most important thing. Be in schedule. Like uh, wake up in the right time. Go take the cold shower. Uh, get out of the house seven minutes, uh, get your breakfast ready in the morning, uh, organize your names, uh, uh, do your demonstration, do your hours, uh, uh, say good positive affirmations, uh, do callbacks uh, in the evening time, do appointments, uh, work um, uh, late, uh, go to sleep right time, read in the morning time, read in the evening time. Schedule is your lifeline in every business, not in South person business, in school, in every business what you do, schedule is your lifeline because uh, it makes things easier and you're not emotional, you're logical and you follow your habits. And this is an uh, important thing. Uh, um, be on time. Uh, what happens uh, if you're late for the plane? You can't get in. Huh? You can't get in. Yeah. What happens then? You miss it. You miss it, exactly. Same life. Be on time, or you miss opportunities. Uh, if you're on time in things, uh, what you do, uh, then it uh, makes your life easier. Uh, you're not late. Uh, sometimes it can happen, you can be late, uh, but on time, it's five minutes earlier, it's on time, then you're prepared, you're ready, and uh, you are you feel successful yourself. So, uh, third one, look nice and clean. This is still important. Uh, uh, don't do that in, like my first uh, day in Bookfield with a nice well off pinkish uh, color shirt going around, not looking very professional. Um, great story time again. Uh, on my uh, fifth summer, sixth summer, I was running an organization in Nebraska State and uh, we have very great alumni who come to speak. It was Matt Atchison and he's a top producer in South Western and then uh, he's uh, now working at uh, Southwestern sister company um, in the uh, investments department. Uh, and then uh, he came to uh, uh, talk in our Sunday, uh, Sunday meeting, uh, some inspirational story. At the end of the meeting, he invited me and uh, we had a private conversation. And look, you know what is? I bought some books uh, like last week. Um, I said, that's great. I bought some books from some Estonian guy. Uh, those like uh, kids books. I said, that's great. Um, and then say, what did you know? One thing what you can actually do, maybe better, to just uh, just uh, give some advice uh, of those boys. And this guy wasn't in my organization; it was in different work, but we had the same state uh, we shared. Uh, I said, you know, you have to give uh, some advice for him that uh, it would be good that if he gonna change the socks um, uh, daily, uh, then uh, he probably is gonna have more uh, sales uh, and uh, luck. <laughs> And he said, yep, that's a great advice. Uh, I'm gonna send a Facebook message for this guy. Chain socks, uh, Walmart, five bucks, five socks. What is this for you? <laughs> so, uh, look nice and clean, it's been good. Uh, especially like, um, uh, boys, uh, change your shirts and socks. Uh, it it, it uh, helps to boost your business more. Uh, and the moms feel more comfortable and maybe they sit down you inside and all the time. Okay. Cool? Okay, let's go on. Um, use your sales talk. Uh, this is so important. Tell is a thing I just uh, sent out uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, um, uh, the South Western Advantage uh, Modified Sales talk. Me and another 12 executive leaders uh, who have sold more than a million units uh, was working with this sales talk, uh, I don't know, how many hours, Ronald? Like uh, 100 hours or something, thinking about uh, how we say hi. Do we say hi or do we say hello? And then we with uh, uh, 30 minutes. So all the words, uh, what's in the sales talk, the script, it's uh, based on the human psychology. Like you do the first approach, uh, and then the first uh, three things that people think about is that there are three questions. Who you are, what you do, and how long time it takes. How is our, our approach is built? Hey, my name is Mylis, I'm a college student from Europe. I'm showing really cool study guides. Um, it just takes only five minutes. Within 10 seconds, I answer three questions what comes on the mom's subconscious, what she would like to ask from you. 
So those are that's how it's based on it's, it's not like random words or verbs, but it's based on the psychology and professional salespeople over the 150 years. And, and it works. Uh, first summer I didn't understand if it works or not because I didn't know how to pronounce it, some of the words, and some of them, uh, some of the lines I actually skip it, and some of the paragraphs I guess I skip it as well. Sometimes I skip it for two. Like, uh, I had some say it, but not so many. So use it. Uh, second, third summer I learned more how to follow the script. Uh, and then uh, it took my confidence. And if you're confident, you have a great attitude, you smile, and you going to have way more sales. Um, yep. And there is uh, two parts, and use it in the right sequence. Pre-approach, approach, introduction, presentation, close, objection, referrals. Why it's important? Because uh, approach is that you say hello, but if uh, after hello you say, do you want to buy some books from me? <laughs> 500 bucks. Uh, and do you want to refer me to somebody? What happens? 999 or police. Uh, if you're great, uh, you, you know how to great, do great jokes, and uh, sometimes indeed, if it was negative people, I smiled and said, You know, do you want to write a check or do you want to put it there in the credit card? And the mom was like, Woo! What a fuck? And I was like, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you want to get everything or you want to just get two books? I don't want to get anything today. Okay, awesome. But is it somebody you want to refer me? And then they, you just break the ice, but it needs more confidence. But anyway, use the, use the right sequence, um, and then the sales cycle works. It's uh, it's pretty fun, and uh, and uh, and you see that people are opening up. Um, they ask their own objections, and then they just take out the credit card and do ching ching. And then he's gonna get the great education. So being professional, use sales talk, word by word by word. Uh, working with integrity, um, this is so important. Uh, integrity is that, that you do the right thing uh, even if uh, nobody sees what you do. Um, why is so important? Because this summer is not like a summer to make money and get your experience, but this is the foundation you, what helps to build the character of you and helps to build right values for the life Right values is that you're honest, uh, you're sincere, you have uh, you have growth mindset, uh, um, and those values comes through the hard work and uh, through some challenges. Um, but and sometimes uh, it's easiest way not to be like do the right thing uh, because nobody don't see it. But in the long run, you know that you have a great karma if you do the right thing. And integrity is so important, uh, especially in the business of sales. Uh, and especially in business generally, because business is built by trust, sales is built by trust, and you know everything what you do right. Uh, people talk about that in social media, everything is so easy to uh, give a feedback, um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever, you just put pictures up, videos up in there, and then uh, and the people in the same community understand if people lie or they're not honest or they they do something what's not uh, cool. Um, so integrity is so important that helps to run your great business. Um, even if you lose uh, some of the sales, that's okay. In the long run, run you always win and you always have a great value for life. Uh, this is some great pictures. Fuko uh, Iberda, uh, she was the best, uh, best from your fun uh, 2019. Um, she, she does in the morning time, uh, how, uh, like, uh, uh, PR works, she always puts the pictures up in the morning time in a breakfast place uh, with the customers and with the officials. You just uh, go to the city hall, uh, you make a picture of these uh, cool people, uh, you hold your permit, um, and then uh, you go to the police station um, before you start opening the new city, you introduce yourself, uh, you do a permit, and you do those uh, Pictures. Uh, it gives more trust, and if you do the sales cycle and you you connect with the names, I always tell, yeah, you guys, you have so great city in here. I met like police officer, Mr. Mr. Uh, Johnson. He's an awesome dude, isn't he? And then we had like a conversation about how awesome this dude is, and you have instant trust, uh, instant connection. Um, I used to see the whole lady and say, yes, he's awesome. She bought this two years ago, and she said. 
the sort of force and how he still uses them and it helps uh, helps uh, her kids improve in math grades and uh, this year she didn't want to get um, um, uh, more books because all her kids are now in college uh, but she referred me to the five other person five other friends uh, who I'm gonna meet today uh, uh, and you again have a decent connection and trust in this city. So uh, yeah. And uh, this is the uh, Bookman Dali uh, got his uh, permit. Uh, way to go, girlfriend. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. The order has been charged. Good stuff, uh, girlfriend. Okay, uh, was a great city? The best city, okay. Um, keep it great PR, uh, more, like uh, uh, there is uh, Agnes Booker, uh, a couple of uh, pictures um, in more time. And always great putting pictures up in, uh, from real life as well, or some activities from Sunday, what you do, and, and some pictures like uh, how is Estonia, what you have done in Estonia, um, and the customer's pictures up, uh, tag them, and if they're um, okay, usually I think they're okay, uh, and then uh, then it, it builds a bit of trust, and then uh, people know that you don't uh, steal kids to go and use their books and to do great thing. Yeah, it happens sometimes. People ask me, like, yeah, uh, like uh, Americans sometimes they're pretty naive, like, uh, they think, like, yeah, uh, I don't know where I put those kids at this uh, small Kia Rio, like, uh, if, you, if you can fit in the truck, they can fit more, but uh, anyway, uh, it's a book that we do with it, uh, integrity and uh, trust and we help people do be successful in life and that's what we do. Um, being professional, one part is that you know the school system as well. Uh, this is thing I didn't know a lot uh, before the first summer, that's why I uh, do a test for you, a quiz. Uh, and the only uh, first year students can answer how you call those uh, uh, ninth grader in English. What to say, ninth grader for English? Uh, huh? Freshman? Gotcha. Tenth grader? Sophomore, right? Eleventh grader? Junior? Uh huh. Twelfth grader? Yeah, not the old junior. Senior, but senior, right? I was like, First time they talked about like sophomore, I said, I don't know, what's sophomore? Is that a new name or something? Yeah. I don't know, that's great. I don't know, that's great. Sophomore, okay. Good stuff. Um, what is that? GPA? Great point average. Great point average, yeah. Honor. What is that? Nerd. Nerd, yeah. Smart people. <laughs> <laughs> What's the AP? AP classes. Some <laughs> knows? Some managers want to help? Advanced placement. Awesome. What is advanced placement? Uh, college credit. Yes, you get the college credit. College credit classes. Huh? SAT. How is that? Yeah, university test to get to the, or at the high school you do the test to get to the university. And this the other one, ACT. One is more focused on math, one is more focused on, uh, if I remember correctly, more like writing and English. Great. Uh, if you know that stuff, it helps to be prof more professional. If you know what to show in different uh, different uh, grades from your book, what you study in third grade in English, what you study in math, like in fifth grade, uh, sixth grade, you don't show uh, you don't show like uh, advanced algebra for the fourth grader. So in fourth grade, you show the fractions, uh, and it helps to connect more. People will see that you're trustable, you're professional, you know what to show. Um, and uh, and it helps to helps to get, get more customers. Great. And um, 
there is so cool thing. I don't know if it's open at the moment or not. Uh, if you uh, log in your S SW dealers, there's product knowledge. Uh, there's deep dive videos that talks about our products. You can go through. There's different things. Uh, uh, it talks about the web page, uh, like the apps, uh, the books. Uh, more you know about your products, better it is. Why it is? Because you have higher conviction. If you have higher conviction, what happens then? You're more, huh? You're more professional, you're more confident. You, you believe that everybody should get something, everybody should buy, everybody should have those uh, uh, study guides um, and everybody's getting those. And you even believe that the grandparents can buy four, four sets of kids books for their grandkids uh, um, or whatever. Uh, like the, everybody can buy the whole bag, um, but the higher your conviction is, the easier to sell. Uh, if you want to learn and be made like a professional, you need to act like a professional. I end up then, uh, do you want uh, more stories? Yes, I'm going to talk about the funniest customer story then. Um, or funniest grandpa customer story. Uh, it was uh, year of 2000, uh, this was 17, I guess. Uh, in the morning time, I was looking on the trailer house. You know, this trailer house is a little bit smaller house. And, uh, it's kind of like, a, uh, how, how you call it, like, a, it's a small house. It's a, in the story, we don't have so many of uh, those uh, trailer houses. Uh, uh, but it's a house uh, what you can put behind your car and drive away. Um, but anyway, um, Grandpa comes to the door, he was, uh, I think he was sleeping or something, I was knocking on the door and he had uh, uh, his uh, sleeping stuff on still and, um, and I approached and he didn't understand a lot, uh, I don't know why, but I was smiling and I said some books and, uh, and then he told uh, his uh, daughter um, was there or living or visiting or something like that. Uh, and she came to the door, and then I approached again, and then they invited me uh, inside. And it was uh, one uh, small boy running around, I think he was like uh, five, six years old or something like that. Then I sat down, and I was like, okay, this is pretty interesting house. You know, sometimes those trailer houses, you have to move things away, and there's one line, you go with the one line, and then you get to this kitchen table, and then you sit down, and then it's just the uh, and in the table, and you have to that way and then you put your book on the table. It was uh, this kind of house. Uh, but it was interesting. Uh, I started, uh, I started uh, demonstrating. I pretty much uh, skipped the intro because uh, I did the short introduction and said like, education is so important, right? And I said, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> need, let's go on like five minutes more. I don't want to spend it here. And then uh, I started demonstrating books and they said, oh, like, oh, there's quite a bit of interest. And then uh, Grandpa was changing clothes and then he came to the table and he was nodding uh, there. But he said, wait, things getting interesting. He went back to the, uh, his room and then he uh, took his uh, earring head and he put the earring head uh, in. Uh, and then I started uh, saying, Bryson, uh, he skipped a pretty much in front of the demonstration. He didn't uh, learn anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, okay, hell yeah, it's going to be a funny story, at least uh, no customer, but I'm going to have fun today. Uh, and then I told them, okay, you know what you do for life, and say, yeah, I'm going to like do some, I used to do farming, and I had some cows and stuff, and I was like, okay, yeah, I did some, the parents are ranching as well, and what's the price of the cow and stuff, and he said, yeah, it's 2,000 bucks, and said, you know, two thousand bucks, you're gonna sell a cow and you're gonna get the set of your four grandchildren children and everybody you're gonna be smart uh, and say, Really? I said, Yes. <laughs> and I get two payments for you too. I said, Yeah, okay. I said, Yeah, it's like a uh, hundred and uh, four books. Uh, uh, it's twenty six in the package, yeah, uh, and then four sets, you have four grandkids. Uh, I said, yeah, I have four grandkids. I said, yeah, how do you tell which grandkid is better than another? I said, you can. I said, exactly. Everybody <laughs> is. Uh, uh, and uh, and Ching Ching, uh, I don't know if he sold the cow, but uh, he wrote the two checks and uh, we made a deal. <laughs> we got some books and, and uh, I think those uh, grandkids, they really enjoy those. They really. Um, uh, one of them were so excited, uh, and Grandpa was so excited as well. He learned about like why flamingos are pink and uh, <laughs> uh, why 
by uh, by uh, right now, by your nose and so on. Like it made him smarter as well. Because what you learn, like if you have been living in a small town of a uh, uh, trailer park or small trailer, you don't see the bird a lot. Uh, but if you can read from the books uh, about animals and stuff, it could be pretty fun. But anyway, that's a great story. Fun stuff. Good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so be professional this summer. Uh, practice a lot. Uh, have a great day. And uh, thank you. Okay, we are done for today. Now, here's a number, 109. You know what that is? Days until the summer, 109. It's going fast. 100 is a lot of days, but hey, it will go fast. And uh, keep in mind, there's uh, also the masters receive the same software already, so pass it on to the first years. And the first years can start learning already. So uh, have a great week. See you next week. Thank you.